in someone who looks really trustworthy, and actually just right here, you just like maybe put a nacho in your mouth or something. Yeah. Because of that, it's not a criticism, it's great. Because of that, you do look really trustworthy. What's your name? Evan. Evan, it's a pleasure to meet you. I have an envelope, the address, the who it's addressed to, doesn't matter, I'm just gonna show this to everybody. We'll find out who it is later. Uh, so, would you hold on to this, Evan? Sure. Thank you very much, don't open it. Just focus on your nachos, all right? They're all gonna open All right. So, uh, I'm new to New York. I moved to New York two months ago today. And, yeah, I know, it's great. All right, good night, thank you. No, prior to that, I was backpacking around the world, and I finished my trip backpacking up to Everest Base Camp, which was great, yeah. But what you do is, all right, enough. When you're backpacking up there, you have no Wi-Fi, you have no running water, and so what you do after a long day of hiking is you sit around and you tell stories. That's it, you do this for hours. And I fell in love with this and learning people's memories. And uh, you were all gracious enough to put your memories in here. Raise your hand if you did this, you just fill out an envelope, good. So a large majority of the audience did this. Filled out an envelope, put the memories in the bag, all right. Just real quick, I want to do our due diligence. I've had one too many people accuse me of either opening the envelope or just seeing through it with the lights. So we want to make sure that's not the case. What's your name right here? Lexi. Lexi. Just grab like one or two off the top. Off the top? Yeah. That's fine, yep. Lexi, hold those up to the light. Make sure that you genuinely can't see through them. I can't see. They're genuinely sealed, we're all good. Yeah. Fantastic, you can drop them. Did someone forget to put it, the yeah, tongue in? Okay, okay. well. Do want me to do it? No, just eliminate that. Probably. Okay. Yeah, just leave it on your face. Okay, We're the only ones that are sealed. All right. So, uh, I'm going to pull them out of the bowl. If you hear your name, stand up, and we'll go from there. Sound all right? Yeah. Oh, boy. Is Tori K in the audience? Tori with an I? That's you. Nice to meet you, Tori. Tori, we haven't set anything up. No. All right. Tori. See the memory in front of you, start to replay it in your head, and then send it to the back burner for a moment. I want you to just focus on how old you were. Do you know how old you were during this memory? I you do. All right. You know when you turn 18, you get those big 18 balloons, right? You ever done this? Focus on making that age like a big 18 balloon right in front of you. Got it? Obviously, it's not 18, it's whatever number you're thinking of. And make that balloon a certain color. Tori, what color is this balloon or these balloons? Purple, all right. So purple's a slightly younger color. What I mean by that is when you're like a, a little kid, you'll usually name like purple, pink, blue, something like that as your favorite color, right? So it pegs you under 10 in this memory. Is that right? Yeah. Under 10. Really see the balloon. Really is purple, just right here in front of you. So I'd assume a single digit balloon just right in the space between us. Yes or no, is it eight? Are you eight years old? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's try and go for the actual memory now. Are you from New York? No. Where are you from? South Jersey, all right, is this memory back in Jersey? Yeah. But saying it's in Jersey, would that really give us any indication as to what it is? No, no it's not as if it was like Broadway in New York, right? right? Okay. So really just see yourself back, you're an eight year old kid, and the question is like, what do you do when you're eight, right? It goes from a variety that you might do like arts and crafts for school, or like play a sport, that's kind of the range of what you're gonna do as an eight year old. And you're smiling a little bit, so I think I hit on one of those three. I don't think it's arts and crafts, I think there's something to do with, uh, with sports, right? But not soccer, not soccer, even though it's a classic sport that people play as a kid. Um, what do you do for a living? I work in marketing. Marketing, okay. So, obviously you're not doing that when you're eight. <laughs> but if I ask you to recall a childhood memory, for anyone who didn't get a slip, it's just recalling a memory, a sound, a smell, or a taste, right? You're just gonna go back to a, a really happy time. Uh, take a deep breath in. It's not a smell, it's a sound, right? Yeah. Sound. A sound from a sport, and you're eight years old in New Jersey. Uh, there's like a, I'm almost feeling like a, like a crack, like something big, right? Like a, yes or no? Is this the sound of like, um, you're eight years old, the sound of a softball on a bat? Yes? Oh is it really? Oh Tori, you've been brilliant. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you very much. You can take a seat. Woo! Uh, Jill W., are you here? You're here? All right, hey, Joe, stand up. Thank you very much. Uh, Jill, same thing. See that balloon right in front of you? 
What color is the balloon? Blue. blue. See, I just said blue was a number, a younger color, but I think you're trying to psych me out, so I think it's maybe a little bit older. I think you're maybe 17 or 18 in this memory? No. Fantastic. Uh, but you know if it's a smell or a sound or a taste, right? Yes. Good. Take a deep breath in. It's a smell. It's not a smell either? All right, Jill, I'm going to opt for getting this wrong now instead of getting this wrong in five minutes. So I'm just going to have you take a seat. I don't think this is going to work with you, but I do appreciate you putting in. Give Jill a big round of applause. It's not a smell or not a That's okay. That's okay. Luckily, we have a lot of you to choose from. For example, is there, I don't know what I'm going to pick. Otherwise, this would be rigged. Uh, is there a Jessica A? Jessica. Yes, yes? Yeah, Hi, Jessica. Hi. Yeah. All right, it's going to be hard to see you, so it's going to be a little bit challenging, but we are going to, oh, wait, you know what? I'm sorry. We are going to use you, Jessica, but there's something else. Uh, someone, this is both, this is pungent, but in a good way and, and a bad way. Uh, someone is thinking of Chinese food. I don't know who it is. Uh, someone is thinking of the smell of Chinese food. They're like seven, eight years old. Someone's doing it. Is there someone thinking of Chinese food? Just raise your hand if this is true. Yeah. There is someone. Yes. yes, what's your name? Mike. Mike, I appreciate it. A little bit distracting, just don't do that right now. Sound good? <laughs> Thank you. All right, Jessica, we're going to go back to you. This is called triangulation, so uh, I'm not going to be the one figuring out your memory, someone else's. So you, could you just point uh, maybe down here to anybody that you don't know? Anybody you don't know? You see you're getting point? Yeah, 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 what's your name? You're with Evan. What's your name? Kendra. Kendra, nice to meet you. Kendra, would you stand up as well? So Kendra, you don't know Jessica's memory, right? No. no. Have you ever done something like this before? Never. All right. So, Jessica, we're going to give Kendra a few hints here, all right? Think of the age that you were in your memory, yeah? Yeah. And same thing, see the balloons? Don't even make them a color, just see them, and you're s there's a slight smirk, and I think I know why. It's because you've heard this age before. Uh, are you also, so Tori was eight, are you also eight in this yeah. memory? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so Kendra, that's your first hint. Okay. Jessica's eight in this memory. Jessica, where are you from? Um, I'm from Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida? Is this memory from Miami? Yeah, all right. So we know she's eight in Miami. And then again, take a deep breath in. It's not a smell, it's a taste, right? Yeah. Taste. Yeah. Generally, if it's a smell, it's like a really deep breath in the nose, which she did kind of midway. So it's a taste. All right, so we know, Kendra, that it is uh, eight years old, Miami, Florida, and a taste, which is pretty darn specific in my book. So we're both going to guess what we think this is. All right? Think about it. Don't say it out loud, of course. I'm going to write my guess. You'll think about yours. I think I think I have a decent idea. I'm not 100% sure I'm correct about this, but uh, I'm pretty sure. All right. Kendra, why don't you go first? Uh, what, what do you think the taste is? Okay. Summer, yes or no, Jessica? Was it a summer barbecue or a taco? No. Yeah, why would that work? Uh, no, you know what though? You said summer barbecue or taco? I think I know what went wrong. You'll find this kind of funny. Take a seat. I'll tell you exactly what went wrong. Really hone in on yours, Jessica. Don't say it out loud. I'm going to write the second guess in blue so you can tell the difference. You're in Miami and you're eight years old. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so look, it really does matter who you're looking at, and Kendra, I was over here center stage looking at you, right? Not as much focused on Jessica's memory, and that's why the first thing I wrote, I told you it was wrong. It was wrong for Jessica, it was right for you. The first thing I wrote was barbecue or taco. Yeah. <laughs> right? In black, and I told you I made the second guess in blue. For the first time, Jessica, out loud, what's the memory you're thinking of? Grandma's chicken noodle soup. There we go. Oh my God. <laughs> Jessica, you can take a seat. Give Jessica a big round of applause. And Kendra as well. And Tori, thank you so much to all of you. So, just out of curiosity, who has a smartphone? Large majority of us? All right. I want everyone to play along with this. It's really important. If I do this just on my phone, you'll accuse me of cheating somehow. So if you have a calculator on that phone, take it out right now. 
and follow along. I'll do the same on mine, of course. We're going to get three two-digit numbers and then a bunch of other random numbers, all right? And of course, we want this to be totally random. Now, you have the advantage. You can kind of see each other. The light is basically blinding everyone outside the front row, so it's hard for me to actually choose somebody. So, uh, Evan, yeah. you're my trustworthy man throughout the show. Could you just turn around and point to anybody you can see? I'm not going to be able to see them, but they'll be able to see themselves, I hope. Uh, yeah, yeah, calculator. All right, if you see yourself, I don't even know what your name is, but just shout out a random two-digit number before you do. Before you do. I want everyone else to think of a two-digit number as well. And make this not something that I could Google, right? So your birthday would be a bad example. Even your address would be a bad example. Like a two-digit number that, that does mean something to you, right? But not something that's obvious, not something that's on the internet, all right? Who am I talking to? What's your name? Phoenix. Phoenix. I love that name. Nice to meet you. What is your two-digit number? 47. 47. So everyone can follow along. Put 47 into your calculator. We're going to press multiply. And Phoenix, I really like it is a black void right now, but could you just point to anybody else and that person will know who they are? Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Your name is? My name is Ben. Ben, nice to meet you. Ben, could you name another two-digit number? 24. 24. So we're multiplying 47 by 24. We're going to do this one more time and add a bunch of random digits. So Ben, point to one more person. Yeah. All right. Someone's been chosen. Brilliant. Who is it? 69. Classic. <laughs> Why was I going to guess that that's going to happen? All right, times 69 equals. We should get, uh, we're not done yet, but 77,832. Yeah? All right. But I still think, despite this, someone's going to go home and they're going to accuse me of you know, making someone pick the certain numbers. So we're just going to make sure it's absolutely random. So, Tori, we haven't set anything up. All right. You're going to type a bunch of random digits on my phone. Let's say like seven, all right? Don't do anything to your phone yet. We're going to do this all together. So we're going to do my phone and I'll tell you everyone at the same time. All right, so I'm going to press plus for this. Turn my phone face down, and literally just tap it seven times, trying to press clear, all right? And then we're gonna add that to what we already have, so go for it, just seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, good, all right. So, press plus, press plus, and you're going to add what we have right here on my phone, which I'll read it out really slowly, just digit by digit, is seven, nine, nine, two, nine, seven, eight. And in case you missed it, I'm gonna read it one more time, all right? You're adding to the number you already have. And it, obviously, if you already did it, just leave it, right? 79929789. We're good? We're going to press equals together on three. Ready? One, two, three. I got, and I hope that you did too, 8,070,810. Is that fair? Yeah. 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 Good. Now we can acknowledge I didn't tell anybody to choose any of those numbers, correct? Correct. Good. I'm going to put my phone away. You keep your phones there. Maybe screenshot it just as a backup, all right? Good. A few years ago, I was, I'm not sure the politically correct way to put this, ballistically high. <laughs> so high that for a period of time, I thought, I thought that nothing was real. I thought I had no free will. And if you're thinking to yourself, like, Max, you don't look like the person that knows how to operate a bomb, therein lies the problem. <laughs> I got over the high, I got over the high. But the question stayed with me of what if I actually didn't have a free choice, right? What if my brain was actually algorithmic, I couldn't choose anything? It'd be scary, right? And even when you choose these numbers right here, it feels really free because I'm telling you, think of a number that's not your birthday, think of a number that's not your address. It's not as free as it sounds, right? Because of the anchoring effect. For example, my birthday is October 21st. So if you think, tell me to think of a two digit number, I'm automatically gonna go away from 21, right? I'm not gonna choose 20, I'm not gonna choose 22. I'm going away. So a number that feels random, like say 75, really isn't because it's far away from the number that's supposedly not. And you're doing the same thing, right? You're anchoring away. Despite the fact though, Tori, you put a bunch of random numbers in. We did this on your phone. You put a bunch of two-digit numbers in. And before anything happened, before we started any of this, Evan, I gave you an envelope. <laughs> I told you it didn't matter who it was addressed to. What mattered was the address. Could you please read out the first three digits of that address, Evan? Uh, so it's 80. Yep. Sage Street. And then. What's the zip code? 70810. No way. 70810. But. 
Uh, before the show, I have, I have one of our crew look at the list of people who bought tickets and they uh, tell me the name of somebody who bought a ticket to the show. So, that person here. Oh, this is nice. It's Jill, and I missed yours earlier, Jill, so now we can redeem ourselves with a different trip. Okay. Um, would you mind just for a moment coming on stage, okay? Yeah. Thank you, give Jill a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is clearly for you. I know. Hold on to this for me, Jill. Uh, I'm just curious, I'm gonna give you the mic here. I'm not gonna get it now. What was the memory you were thinking of? Um, the good humor ice cream truck. That's good, sound? Amazing. Uh, you were now. Yeah. So this is funny because this is a this is a dummy envelope, right? There's no stamp. It's not been put in the mail. It's a dummy envelope, and uh, inside is a dummy letter. Put a dummy letter. I'm not gonna touch it. Would you? I'm just gonna let you open that up. The good humor ice cream truck. Yeah. There's one piece of paper inside. I'll take this out. Are you 10 years old in this memory? Yes, you are. I'm going to let you take that, Joe. You've been fantastic. Thank you so much. Give Jill a big round of applause. <laughs> New York, uh, you really have been excellent tonight. I just, I just can't have you going home thinking something that isn't true. I can't have you going home thinking that somehow I like put that number on your phone. I didn't write it on all of your phones. I can't have you thinking that maybe I somehow secretly wrote it on the envelope. No, it had to be these numbers, and frankly, had a single one of you not put your name in the envelope, this probably would have worked a different way, right? It was randomly out of the blue, and when you chose them, you were mixing them up, right? Uh, it was Tori, you were chosen first. And in your memory, how old were you? Eight. You were eight years old, right, you were eight years old. And then we went over and guessed, uh, um, it was, Mike, with the Chinese food, right? You were seven years old? Yeah. Right, so you were eight, and then zero, seven years old. And then we went over to Jessica, you were how old? Eight. You were eight years old. And then uh, Jill, you were how old? Ten. ten. You were eight, and then seven, and then eight, and then ten. New York. <laughs> Nothing is real. Nothing is real.